So one color that I don't think I played with enough is the Star Loon. Uh, it's similar to Stargazer in our water soluble line, even though it's a couple shades darker. But I don't think I've actually done a video with this other than a really shorty thing. These are little uh, one ounce cups. I'm only going to use half scoops. These are my little scoops. They're taster spoons. I got them at a restaurant supply. Um, they hold about an eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm going to use about half of that, half of the scoop in it. See, this looks a lot darker than my other color, so I really, really, really want to test this. Make sure where it fits in my paintings. Spice Ginger, we used a ton of. What we're using today is resin art. If you've never been familiar to the product, it's a uh, dry epoxy paint for two-part resin. Um, I have put it in nail polish. It does work. I'm going to assume it would work in automotive clear coat. Um, we did put some in some alcohol, but there's so much mica in there, you're still going to have to bind it somehow because most that's why people don't have shimmering alcohol inks because there's mica in it and when the alcohol evaporates where does the mica go it still doesn't have anything to bind it so um, i'm going to try this first with uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i want to try it with aquamarine and belize blue i'm on the fence on which way i'm supposed to go i'm going to do the belize blue first I love this color. Absolutely love, love, love. It's one of the first colors I've played with, so you guys haven't really seen me play with it much since. I'm trying to get through the color range, you know, at least drop each one of them in some resin so you can see them. This is a really, really rich, uh, deep lagoon blue. Okay, I've got some little uh, wooden coffee stirs. I just kind of pop in half and then make little mini stir sticks for these tiny cups. And that way I'm only using half the resin. Wow. This is way more violet than I thought it was. That's interesting. I may need to revisit this batch. I mean, it looks blue in the camera. Don't get me wrong. But I see a lot of violet, and it's in um, all green. So we're going to see how it pops against these other colors. It's in a green pearl. Uh, this is the Spice Ginger. Yeah, I'm putting them right on top because they we precondition the color and the minerals, so they just kind of slip right into the resin. Mix easily for you. Very handy if you're working with some kind of quick setting resin. This is that Belize Blue. Beautiful color. Okay, I think for this whole test, I'm going to be using black or white. That backdrop. I'm going to start with my Stone Coat base tint. So I'm going to pour a tiny bit of the half an ounce and I don't need but just a small dollop of this not even a dollop I'm just getting the spoon to get a little bit coated on it I think that's all it needs I don't need any more than that just a tiny bit it's just the edge of that spoon I think I'm going to do some kind of interference green and lighten this up. So I'm going to pour same size cup at their paper. I love these little things because you can squeeze the sizes of them as you're dripping. I'm going to pour half of this off.
And that was a generous amount I just dumped in there. It should really lighten the bottom. Let's see what's going to happen. I may have to add a little bit more resin, which I'll do. I'll just drip a little bit in here. And yeah, that's not preconditioned interference mica. You have to take your time and stir that one slow because that's the difference between putting regular mica in and oh yeah. I'll show you the difference between the two. If you like the darker value, then of course you've got it. But if you like the lighter value, which is more similar to our uh, stargazer in the other line, then you know how to get it lighter. Basically, 50-50. Gosh, I'm going off the camera. There we go. I'm going to pick that up. There's your difference between the lighter and the darker. So let's see what they look like. Uh, okay, I still want that aquamarine, but I'm going to go with what I've got. I'm just lubricating it slightly. I'm not going to put a whole bunch down, but it's almost as if I was doing the canvas. Now remember when you're working on a tile, it can only handle so much resin because it's a hard surface like glass. There we go. I'm just going to warm it. All I did was warm it. So you simulate, let's say we have a big canvas, we just lubricate it with a little bit of clear, we warm the clear. Okay. Um, since I kind of want to make this a hero, let's see. Oh, that really was darker than I expected. Interesting, though, what it does when it floats over the black because that green should pop. Keeping it simple and clean, not too cluttered. Just kind of roll simple lines going down. Remember we put a little clear down, so that's what I'm going to do on these edges here. I'm just going with clear. Don't want it too puddled. Again, I have no idea what this is going to do. <laughs> How it's going to behave. Oh, and I didn't even use my lighter value. Interesting. Let me put it in here now. I thought 
thought I would. Look at those cells. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I might have to swipe in. Those are some pretty cells in that corner. Looks like it's multiple layers. Over here. That's a nice effect. I'm liking the Belize blue. And you, I, you probably can't see on the camera, but these are two different blues that are doing their thing. The center is a little bit, those two blues, just by adding a little bit of the interference green, which really will be apparent when it dries. You can see it on the edges of this as I'm turning it. This is going to be really pretty. I'm liking what's happening in this corner. And I had the Belize blue and a little bit of black and some clear. That's why it's a little bit lighter on this side. So it went over. It didn't really have it go back. I could blow this just a little bit more, but I'm sure liking these Belize blue pockets popping up in that spiced ginger. I forgot I prepped the other tile. I just lubricated it slightly. I mean, all I did is take a little bit on my stick and just put a little clear around it. You don't want to overdo it because tiles can't take too much. They are, after all, a form of glass. They have no give at all to them. Just a little lubrication. I've got the aquamarine in the middle. So in the other the tile, I was using the uh, Belize Blue Star Balloon. Star Balloon mixed with some light green, interference green. Spiced ginger and black. This one I'm adding some aquamarine in the mix and see what happens. This tile I'm actually working on right now, I spray painted black. And the tile to the right is just a straight 6x6 six six white kitchen tile that you get from Home Depot. There we go. I blew it by not putting that down. At least for what I wanted to do here. Okay. So I'm actually going to go for the... This is the star of a loom with extra interference green put in and this is the regular star balloon it's it's very dark much much darker than um i thought but it's a gorgeous color and it it is in an interference green base so it's beginning to going to become changeable no matter what you put it in um, you're going to get some color shifting depending upon what you use with it so i'm inclined to put it here it here. We are going to have some black on the edges so we can get some pattern. So I'm going to lay some black in each of these corners. This is the stone coat black mixed in some clear resin.
I'm putting it on the edge here because I want the color to go over the top and I'm just putting a tiny stream of the stone coat black right next to this really light lightened version of the star of a loom I think I'm gonna, since the Belize blue kind of got lost in that last one, we're gonna make this Belize blue really a gorgeous star here. It's really pretty over the black when it's floated over black. I love this color. So why not? Give it a beautiful home. Hmm. I'm digging this lacing here. I lost some of the black here. Maybe too hot. Yep. That resin's way too hot to do that. It's one thing about swiping. Still needs to have a tiny little bit of give. Plenty of paint on here, so I'm not going to lose anything, but that paint was a little bit too hot to swipe. I'm just tilting. I'm going to stretch it over there. This one I'm going to wait and see. I want to see what it's going to do. I'm actually going to try to slide it over. I am really liking that police blue and that spiced ginger. I think I should probably get all the resin out. So since I don't have that much aquamarine left, we're going to use that darker star balloon as kind of that center color. Might as well use it all. Oh, and once again, I forgot to put some clear down. I, I just, I don't know why in this particular way I wanted to float a little bit more. I just wanted it slightly lubricated. First one. It's just a little bit. It's just enough to make sure there's some moisture on it. So I only have to put a little stone coat in there for effects. I need a dot right in this corner. Okay. So let's look at, this is that spice ginger. That is a perfect compliment. This, you have yellow, orange, and orange, yellow. This I consider like an orange, yellow. Yeah, no, there is, by the way, a ton of yellow in Spice Ginger. For color mixing, it's a good thing to know that. And the direct complement would be a blue-violet. Orange complement to blue. 
yellow complement to violet. They are the perfect complement to each other. Whether they go over and flow into one another, of course, has been the test. Oh, we're, we're getting just a slight moment. We're getting some nice cells on this. Just had to point that out while it's setting up. Woohoo! I'll... guess I'm going to do this with it. <laughs> I think I need some gold. I need something to break this up. I am going to put a black on each end. I don't have much black left. We're just using all the leftover resin here now. I really need more aquamarine. Good thing this stuff mixes super fast, huh? I love my resin art. I can quickly say, ooh, okay, extra resin, dump some in here, take my little spoon, drop some in there, stir it up. Bada bing, bada boom. Sorry, but it needed something like right there to break that up. It's way too blue there. And funny me, I normally do gold in everything, but nope. Okay, so I'm just putting all the last resin on. Let's, uh... Give it some heat. Now I'm just going to heat it slightly and see if I can't swipe this. I know it might get messy and I might lose some of it. But if I don't get it too warm, oh shoot, I don't have any black in the middle for it to go over. My black is over my edges, isn't it? Just enough to wet the tip of the spoon, that's all I need. Okay, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to actually run this black all the way through. Now I'm going to try and make fat lines and make the color have to go over it both ways. Let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, I just got it warm. I should be able to... down. Oops. Shiny side down. These are my uh, shipping labels. Same kind of material. It's like parchment or uh, like freezer paper. So I want to move the color over the top of this black. Ooh, I like that color combination. Ooh, I'm going to do that on a canvas right there. Look at that. I don't know if you 
you guys can see how flipping gorgeous that is. I'm going to get everything off my table. I don't want to knock anything resiny over. I like things kind of tidy. So give me a second to slide stuff around. Wow. I want to do that on a canvas. Holy moly. You guys can't see what's happening here shimmer-wise, can you? My goodness, it is magnificent. Especially that stargazer or, or, or star of a loom that's been lightened. And these little tiny cells that are popping right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I need to do this exact same thing on a big canvas. Good thing I recorded this. <laughs> and what's interesting is uh, where the spiced ginger in the aquamarine's landing, it's kind of forming a green. We're still getting cells in the middle now. I should probably swipe over that. But I really liked what happened when the black and the orange were there. But now that it looks like it's trying to dominate, I hate to say it. Let's see if I can. Without disturbing these. Interesting. This little black area up here is real pretty. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at those cells popping. Oh. And I guess I'm gonna go this way. Keep in motion of what we're doing here. This is amazing. I'm not trying to brag, I'm just kind of blown away by how metallic that orange is. The blue, the cells that are popping up, there's some amazing cells popping up. It's a whole cluster of all these aquamarine cells. I don't know if I can stretch them slightly without ruining this. And then just tilt them back slightly the other way. Just gently stretching this. That's outrageous. Well, <laughs> crazy. Should probably heat that up because it'll encourage some cells right there. We did swipe over black there, but I don't want it so loose that when they pop, they fall through. So I have enough resin to do some kind of drops on one of these. This is kind of pretty. 
I like this the way that, and these look like the ends of a butterfly wing. I'd love to be able to incorporate that somehow in some kind of butterfly effect. Okay. But as far as doing drops, this is kind of pretty the way it is. I want to see how this dries. So I'm going to not use this one for the drops. Even though I do like ones that have black in them. This has some nice lacing. Very nice lacing. I'm going to see what happens when I put some drops on top of this. Now before I get too far along, let me do a close-up. I think this was the third one on the black tile. If you can see all that texture that's in there that's forming in there all that texture in the paint in here it's like creating these almost uh, crochet type cells it's crazy okay so I'm gonna pour the rest of the resin off in these two Oh, I might leave a little bit for a third color if I wanted to do it. Okay. Then I'm going to add just the teeniest pinch of the bling of gold in that video I just uploaded. I used too much. It was blinding and it didn't, it wasn't pretty. So just a pinch. That's all. It's not even a, a quarter of one of my spoons. And this is about half of an ounce. Okay. Well, that's interesting. And maybe this will be a happy accident. Okay, so I'm going to pick the area that has probably the least interest. Kind of right over here where there's not much going on. And see if we can't create stuff. And I'm going to try to pour it between that blue and the aquamarine. My drops are coming out a little bit bigger than I'd like. looks like a caterpillar. Oh, now that's interesting where it hit over the top with the aquamarine and the spiced ginger. Those are pretty, pretty, pretty droplets. Now, this is just blue, but I really like putting the gold down first. I'm glad I saved just a skosh more. So I'm going to mix just some more gold up. Might as well go for broke here. See how it looks like clusters? Oh, and they shimmer like you can't believe. That's the bling it gold and the bling it blue. Now that first one was an accident. Where I put the um, gold and the blue in the same one. I didn't mean to do that. So here's one that's just gold. But again, just a pinch. The teeniest bit. You can always add more. As many of us say, I've heard Jeff say it, but I've always said that about color. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. And that's very, very, very wise words. Hey, this is really interesting where I'm going over the existing uh, cells. So dropping on existing cells, pushing them out into different patterns. Loving this. Well, yesterday I did a test where I put uh, this down on top of a, a, a brown and this spice ginger is going to behave probably the same way. The gold really pops, but then as soon as I put the 
um, blue on top. It's crazy. It makes this little highlight spot like, I'll show you. I probably have way too much resin on here now and these are going to spread overnight, but I still want you to get an idea. And then just for the grins, we haven't put it on the Belize Blue. Might as well. This is the test. What happens when we Belize it? Now this is blue. Yeah, my resin's finally saying, are you done? Because we're almost done. So now this is bling it blue. Now I'm trying to put just the teeniest drop in each one. I eventually I'll find a great way to apply this without me just trying to drop it with my fingers and make mistakes like I just did. Let me stop a second before I ruin this and you don't get to see a close-up. <sighs> this technique could be used in so many different variations. I see it on multiple layers, under layers with other layers on top. Not sure how much you can pick up what's happening with this. I'm loving all those other little cells kind of hugging around them. This is kind of almost giving me a, a flower pattern here, petals. They can be shaped any way you want them. I see bubbles. Don't want them too hot. a little odd. Did something drop in here or not mix? Looks like something dropped in there. There's five colors of this. So far I'm using the gold and the blue. But there's violet, green, gold, blue, red. And then if I was to do interference like this, it'd be even more subtle. But the interference will still dry with quite a bit of clarity. It'll still be kind of ethereal, a little bit more milky, like a milky wave. But you'll still be able to see through it by doing this technique because interference micas allow 95% transparency once they're dry. Well, that's kind of pretty, the blue on, on the gold on the blue. So the gold's on top of the blue blue, and then I'm putting the blue bling it on top. I'm gonna warm these so it settles just a bit. And I'll see if I can't get my phone I had too many gloves on, so I couldn't get my flashlight to work a few minutes ago. It, you have to have, I guess, it, the phone has to sense your warmth of your fingers and with three pairs of gloves on. And I just started over here in this corner because I said, well, this is the most an interesting part right here. And that just suddenly made it very interesting to me. 
So these are just tests to see what I would do on a canvas with these different color combinations. I didn't realize we weren't completely in the camera here. So let me get my, oh wow, look at that. It's an amazing look, folks. Sorry, I'm trying to get that stable. I don't want it running off. And hopefully the flashlight and my phone will recognize my finger now. Yes, it did. Yay! Okay, so if this gives you any indication about how absolutely flipping beautiful this is. This is amazing. And I wanted you to see this. I'm trying to do it without having the phone actually be <laughs> camera, but with the flashlight on my phone, you can see just how absolutely dazzling those colors are. And then Turn it and you can even see more of the magnificence of it. Well, I hope you've been enjoying. We've explored the Star Balloon and its uh, family. It's Kissing Cousin by adding more interference cream. We got this really light, wispy, beautiful version of it, similar to the Stargazer in our existing line. Let's well, uh pull all this out so a little bit messy but you'll be able to see all four this was that one just before if I can get see if I can get close-ups on all of these resin all over my hand sure I can this It is not behaving. Okay, so here is the the one without the bling on it. That's that one before. This is the one that's really, really plain. I'll probably do a second layer on top of this. I thought I was going to do the drops, but I decided to do it on this one. And then... This is that first one. You can really tell the difference between the two. The center is the darker Star of the Loon, and then the lighter version is the Star of the Loon mixed with 50-50 Interference Green. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, little project, and I will see you next time. Remember, guys, be good to be each other. I'll see you next time, and remember, guys, be good to each other. Bye-bye. Trying to do it without having the phone actually be camera, but with the flashlight on my phone, you can see just how absolutely dazzling those colors are. And then turn it, and you can even see more of the magnificence of it. Well, I hope you've been enjoying. We've explored the Star Balloon and its uh, family. It's Kissing Cousin by adding more interference cream. We got this really light, wispy, beautiful version of it, similar to the Stargazer in our existing line. Let's uh, pull all this out. So a little bit messy, but you'll be able to see all four. 
So here is the on it. That's that one before. This is the one that's really, really plain. I'll probably do a second layer on top of this. I thought I was going to do the drops, but I decided to do it on this one. This is that first one. You can really tell the difference between the two. The center is the darker Star of the Loon, and then the lighter version is the Star of the Loon mixed with 50-50 Interference Green. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, little project. I'll see you next time, and remember guys, be good to each other. Bye-bye.